Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer, and this is part two of Davos Uncensors Termel for answers to their questions. I had complained that they had censored me, and now they let them back. And they posted them on the last day after the forum was closed. This is a continuation of an article about Davos. When urge an expansion of regulatory coverage of the financial financial system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching over a malfunctioning machine is going to help. He said the financial crisis was attributable to inappropriate macroeconomic policies. Oh, we just needed the right policies, right? And we would have been able to pay the 11 that they didn't print. The 11th. He also denounced the failure of financial supervision. Yeah, the malfunctioning system can be made use of to make money for fraudulent ways too. Putin was, if anything, more blunt. He attacked the concept of a unipolar world, called for an end to the privileged position of the U.S. dollar as the world's major reserve currency. Well, you got oil. Why don't you join an oil dollar as what you go? He continued, today investment banks, the pride of Wall Street, have virtually ceased to exist. In just 12 months, they've posted losses exceeding the profits they made in the last 25 years. So maybe they're ready to listen. Even the rich guys, the world rich guys, may be ready to listen. Alan Blinder, the Princeton economist and former vice chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, responded, The sad thing is that we might have scoffed at this a while ago, but we really dragged the world down. Oh, you're forgiven. Not. The Obama administration, for its part, signaled its disinterest in any serious international coordination or financial regulation by failing to send a single high-ranking official to the forum. Gee, even I went, and Obama didn't send anybody? Well, I didn't go personally, but I sent a lot of messages. They eventually got through. While an array of government leaders from around the world were in attendance, including me, the unelected leader, None of the top U.S. delegates who'd been advertised showed up. While general statements are being issued at Davos abjuring protectionism and warnings that are being made about the disastrous implications for the world economy of such policies, the reality is a growth of economic nationalism. Remember now, they just announced that they're going to raise tariffs and just use U.S. steel in the U.S. Now imagine the whole world does that. Everybody puts up tariffs against foreign so that people can't sell their stuff over here to take it home to pay their interest. So we're going to sit here and we're all going to be stuck with our own little death gambles and our own little nationalities with insufficient market to buy what we produce. Certainly doesn't help, does it? Less than a week before the opening of the forum, U.S. Treasury Secretary Geithner issued a provocative threat of possible trade sanctions against China, accusing the Chinese of manipulating their currency to obtain a trade advantage over the U.S. Everybody has to export what their home market can't buy because everybody borrowed P and everybody's trying to come up with P plus I in prices and the home economy only got the P, so they always got the I over P plus I left over. They can't sell and they got to export. Everybody. Stephen Roach of the Morgan Stanley Asia spoke at Davos of a rising tide of economic nationalism and delegates from so-called developing countries complained that the massive U.S. deficits resulting from Obama's stimulus program and bank bailouts would suck up the bulk of available private credit on world markets. So these guys don't know about creating their own credit, okay? They think it's one big piggy bank and theirs is empty. <laughs> Only Hugo, only Hugo is setting up his alternate currencies, so he's going to save Latin America. Large economies are accessing international capital markets for themselves, said Trevor Manuel, wanting to fight over the piggy bank funds. The minister, finance minister of South Africa, Ernesto Zedillo, the former Mexican president who was in power during the country's financial meltdown in 1994, said the U.S. needs to show some proof they have a plan to get out of the fiscal problem. Well, we know they don't, and this guy's looking for proof they do. What, he wants to hear, he wants to be lied to? We, as developing countries, need to know we won't be crowded out of the capital markets, which is already happening. That's right, we can't create our own credits, and our piggy bank's empty, and they won't let us have any. The Davos Forum underscores the impossibility of developing a national and coordinated international policy to resolve the economic crisis within the capitalist framework of private ownership of the means of production and finance and the division of the world between rival nation states. Putin, speaking as a defender of capitalism, gee, that's neat from a supposed former communist uh, country. Hey, maybe he's talking about communistic capitalism where everybody gets to be a capitalist referred to the financial parasitism that fueled the massive fortunes of the financial aristocracy over the past three decades. 
<laughs> yeah, right. As a pyramid of expectations that would have collapsed sooner or later. Yeah, right. And indicated who is to pay for the price of its collapse. Well, yeah. This amounted to unearned wealth. Right. A loan that will have to be repaid by future generations. No, not if we start our own credit system and let these guys hang on to their debts themselves. Let's transfer all that debt back to the guys who made it and let them die in the negative. Not hungry, but in the negative. Within the existing economic and political system, the only future is one of increasing poverty and repression and the growth of national antagonisms, leading inevitably, as in the last great depressions, to the horrors of global growth. And yes, Major Douglas, the engineer of social credit, and everybody's laughing at, oh, social credit, haha, it was a failed party. Well, it would have worked. It wasn't as good as let's, but had needed more supervision, but it would have worked. And sociable credit was a solution then, and it could have been a solution. This is like his first presentation in 1919 to the World Engineering Conference of, on social credit. He pointed out that. It always starts with economic war, and economic war inevitably leads to real war, because no one's going to sit there and be foreclosed on and starve to death with their kids without putting up a real fight. And death gamble lets people die on our planet when you lose. More gosh, death gamble. So, the specter haunting Davos is the emergence of an independent movement of the working class, Fighting to put an end to capitalism, not capitalism, monopoly capitalism, communistic capitalism where we all get to play is okay. You need a perfect blend of the two. Capitalism ain't all good. Communism ain't all bad. There can be a perfect blend of the two. So that's sad that, you know, the world ex social form of denouncing capitalism. There's nothing wrong with honest capitalism. And build a socialist society based on the satisfaction of human needs, not private property. Well computerized time through Wecky, and you guys are doing it and it's being done so the disintegration of the world economy poses with the greatest urgency the development of a unified struggle by the working class on the basis of an international socialist program so they're still looking for it and there it is on the Millennium Declaration to restructure the global financial architecture on the basis of human time which empowers humanity to be equal in the eyes of the banks as a piece of gold. And we are. Unless you don't feel you are, in which case well, you're not much of a human. So my answers to fixing the world banking system by the banking systems engineer have finally been posted at Davos. Too late for anybody to put, be put on the spot then, but there have been 235 videos that were submitted from normal, ordinary people on these four questions. And there were 111 video statements, they call it by the leaders, if you go to youtube.com slash Davos. So that's quite a few videos I have a chance to go over and add my commentary to at YouTube. So they may have escaped the question at this particular forum of Davos. But I don't think they're going to be able to escape the question over the next year as I try and catch them and find out if they're in favor of instituting Resolution C6 to governments from the United Nations Millennium Declaration so that we can restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. And once time is also collateral with gold, the true power of humanity will finally shine the brightest light when everybody gets to work. So... Davos may be over, they didn't save the planet, there's going to be a lot more misery happening before someone does, but all it takes is groups to start forming their own time banks and starting to interconnect, and it'll be fixed as fast as that. So as I make fun of these groups that are shutting down their operations and for lack of money and say you could be setting up your own time banks, I'll be pointing out that getting organized, you can intertrade with other people all around the world because they value time in the same way. There's no need to wait for anybody to do it for you. You can build your own economic lifeboat. The blueprints are out there. Time banks, time dollars, lets, all sorts. Just remember, as long as it's based on time and no one's forcing you to have one hour per hour, it's going to be a winner. And people are going to start doing these to survive. And when enough of them get joined together, it'll be an economic ship. It won't just be a lifeboat anymore. 
So let's say a prayer. Not too many people are going to croak before we finally get the world fixed. It's easy to do. It's all bad software, malfunctioning banking, and it can be reprogrammed overnight. So everybody dying for lack of action. Check out Case Lab on the internet to see how that works. If you have any power to do something to facilitate the solution and you fail to act, you're costing lives is what it boils down to. Well, when I understood how interest worked 30-some years ago, it took me 40 days to figure out it was a killer machine, and my mathematics gambling professor, Walter Schneider, said John went from being apolitical to running for everything. One day his interest in interest was non-existent. The next day it was the single motivating factor in his life. And it's been for the last 30 years. And I want to be part of the movement to abolish loan sharking. Zero interest. Heaven on earth. Right out of the Our Father. I'm John the Engineer, trying to engineer heaven with your help, Termel. you got to spread the word. There's a way to save ourselves.